Welcome to the Sydney Con. It's really nice to meet you. My name is James Humberstone. I am a lecturer in the music education division, although I also have postgraduate students in all sorts of interesting areas of musicology and composition. And that's because my background is uh, not just as a music educator, although I was a teacher for 12 years in a classroom here in Sydney, or classrooms here in Sydney. Um, I also uh, have the background as a composer and a producer, originally writing lots of music for children, actually, um, but also working with crazy experimental groups and more recently cross-genre. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. Um, I also, as well as having those two backgrounds, have an, a third uh, string to my bow, uh, which is that I spent nearly a decade uh, working for a little music software company in the UK called Sibelius, as the kind of Sibelius person here in Australia, uh, and worked my way up there from technical support all the way through to the product management um, group, which is is the, is the cool people who get to actually design the new softwares that will go in, uh, sorry, the new features that will go in that software. So that's my sort of broad background here at the con. I've been here at the con now for eight years. Uh, I teach a bunch of different courses. I'll definitely be seeing you this year. Um, so uh, in future years, I teach things like junior secondary music education, which I think is the most important course in our music education degree, because it's where we teach you to um, we teach you to teach um, junior secondary. So like that year seven eight, which quite often music teachers think has the worst classes that you'll teach. But I I like to turn that on its head and say, for many kids in New South Wales, uh, maybe up to about eighty percent, that's the only time they'll ever have studying music with a trained musician. You. Or me or whoever so um, so that's what a wonderful experience what a wonderful opportunity right what a gift to be able to bring music to children's lives so that's my kind of shtick on that one I also teach uh, composition in music education with my uh, colleague Jim Coyle here who's also got a compositional background technology in music education as you might guess from my, my background with Sibelius but also sitting here in my studio at home um, and uh, I teach into the Masters of Teaching. Uh, as far as you're concerned, if you're just arriving at the con and you're coming into the music education degree or even in another degree, but you would like to take some music education subjects, uh, you'll see me this year in the two first year subjects uh, or two of the first year subjects now. Uh, so the first one this semester is Key Ideas in Music Education, which we call KIME for short. Um, you'll only see me nipping in and out, but I will take the whole of the first session, but I'm, I'm your unit of study coordinator there. So any queries, questions, worries, excitement you have, um, come and talk to me, uh, as well as being available via the usual channels, email, etc. Uh, I have an open door at least once a week. So you'll see a little notice next to my um, door. If you come and find my door, which will say when my door will be open, you can drop in and have a chat. Uh, and then next semester, semester two, um, I will be running, but not teaching into, uh, key approaches in music education, which, um, so key ideas, uh, we take off the Orff Keatman Schulwerk as the center of learning about learning music, which is generally thought of as a primary music um method or pedagogy, uh, but actually is applicable, right? There's lots of great practitioners in high school using ORF as their inspiration. In the second semester, uh, we look at a bunch of pedagogies, but we have a, a six-week block on Kadai method, uh, which is a kind of, again, a lot of people think of that as a primary method, but it's actually taught at the con high um, to help teach all sorts of different musical skills. Um, but we also look at a contemporary pedagogy. So how has music education been taught and how have we thought about music education since the 1960s all the way up to current day? So that's what you'll be doing with me this year. Uh, let me tell you a couple of other things that I do while I'm at the, at the con. My kind of shtick in the degree is to be your provocateur, to radicalize you a little bit. My line that you'll hear me say very often is, you are not normal. What do I mean by that? You are not normal. Well, really, it's just about recognizing that people like you and me have been incredibly privileged and lucky, right? And we continue to be. So I don't know about you, but if, if, if the research bears out, about 19 out of 20 of you have had a private teacher on an instrument since you were very, very young. Uh, you've probably played in an ensemble 
And you've probably done that outside school or sung in a choir. So lots of you will have been members of things like Sydney Children's Choir, SYO, uh, different bands, SWE, things like that. That's going to be your background. So you've probably had an awful lot of music outside what happens in the music classroom. And that's the key for me to remember when we're studying to be music teachers, because our job isn't just to teach people like us. Yes, it's wonderful. We're privileged. Now you're at the con. You've got four years at New South Wales, if not Australia's premier music institution. But let's remember that what we're training for is to give that opportunity to every kid who comes to our schools. So I think that's a real privilege, really amazing to do. And I'll be working with you in the courses that I teach to think about that and think about how you can broaden your own experiences and your own understanding of, of, of kids and music education. And that's fantastic that there's some tradies next door just started making some noise. Don't know if that's coming through on the microphone. Um, Finally, let me just tell you a little bit about what I do in the research side. So I've talked to you a lot about my teaching and my experience and what you'll get from me in the degree. But of course, all of your academics here at the con are also busy doing research. So I do Um, two different kinds of research, what's called non-traditional research outputs, which is writing original innovative music. Um, I have recently been doing a lot of cross-genre stuff. Back in 2016, uh, I created a work called um, Odysseus, which we premiered here at the con with over 100 con students, lots of music head students involved. And that was my idea to bring together classical, if you like, art music um, trained young people uh, with hip hop culture. So we worked with an MC, um, uh, there's kind of like slam poetry in there. We had a, a producer come over from America and we put this work together. And then in 2018, I actually took a smaller group of con students and we toured that down to Melbourne. So I'm really, really interested in not just lecturing you about this and, and trying to get us to broaden our minds and think about how we can um, teach all of the kids, but also to, to become what I call pluralist music pluralists, which is a kind of theme of, of, of thinkers uh, or a theme that thinkers at in Music Ed at the Con have, have explored over the last 10 or 20 years with some of my other colleagues. And then the other side of my creative outputs is working, as I said before, with experimental experimentalist groups, um, producing, I guess, what you would think of as more traditional composed art music. And then I have my traditional research. So I was lucky enough, again, also back in 2016, the university um, asked me to make their first ever MOOC, Massively Open Online course. And you can see it on the screen now, The Place of Music in 21st Century Education. So I use this course to um, kind of provoke, again, teachers to think about what should music be? Where should music sit in the curriculum? And how should we be changing? How does technology Um, affect how we should be teaching music how do other things changing in society and in culture how should they change how we might be thinking about music how can we bring the best from our past in music the pedagogies that you're going to learn about this year how can we bring those with us um, but also create new pedagogies think of new ways of teaching music and making it more interesting and musical and wonderful for for children Um, So since I made that MOOC, uh, we've had over 5,000 teachers do it. And all of those teachers sign a little waiver that says that anything that they write or, you know, some of them even write songs and make videos and things, anything that they do then becomes data for my research. So I've got that, you know, five years of what teachers think about the things that I taught them in that course. And I'm writing um, research, I'm analysing that and writing research about Uh, the identity of teachers, how they feel confronted in those situations, how they respond to different ideas and so on and so forth. Um, And I'm also doing research in other related fields, so things like creativity in music education. So there you go, that's probably way uh, longer than I was supposed to speak uh, on a a video, Uh, so I apologise for that, but I'm really, really looking forward to meeting you this year. Again, congratulations for getting into the con. You really are not normal, you're one of you know, the stars of music uh, in our state and in our country. So congratulations for being in our degree. I know you're going to have an amazing four years. We're going to work you really hard, but hopefully uh, most of it's going to be fun and extremely satisfying. So, yep, see you in class.